In this video, we'll look at how to place wainscoting for rooms and along stairs using the wall railing tool. Let's begin with creating an interior wall railing. With the interior wall railing, let's click and drag a railing in the middle of the room. I have a 3D view open. We'll be able to see both in the 2D view and the 3D view. With this railing, let's go ahead and double click and open it up. To modify this railing, to follow stairs, be pushed up against another wall, there's a few key changes that I'm going to make. Let's begin on the general panel. First thing is I'm going to check no room moldings on either the interior or the exterior side of this wall. I'm going to check that there is no room definition when I slide this up against the other wall. I don't want there to be room definition. On the structure panel, I'm also going to check that it's a furred wall. Again, when this gets slid up to the exterior wall or another interior wall, there could be a very small space in there, and I don't want room definition that could cause issues as I work with my model. Moving down the panel on the left-hand side, I'm going to come over into wall types. Currently, I'm using an interior railing. I'm going to click Define, and I'm going to make a copy of this I'm going to call this a wainscot railing. And then for the layers that you see down below, I'm going to remove all of the layers except the main layer, and I'm going to set it to be one inch. Let's begin at the top. I'm just going to delete the top and bottom layer. I'm going to take the thickness of the main layer, which is marked as framing. I'm going to uncheck it so it won't build framing. You could change this as drywall. For the purposes of what I'm doing here, it's not really important to manage that. So we now have a new wall type called Wainscot Railing. On the Rail Style panel, let's go ahead and take a look at the different settings in here. The one that I do want to uncheck is Raise Lower Bottom. And then on the Newels and Balusters, let's go ahead and change this to 48 inches. This will be the height for the wainscoting. Down below, the thickness for the panel, we'll set it at one inch. Won't really affect this one for the glass panel, that's based on the symbol. When I change this to be a wainscot panel, it will adjust it and use the thickness that I've set here at one inch. For the plan display, I want to show specifically the panels and balusters. So I'm going to uncheck Use Defaults on the Fill Style. We'll set that to be 50% on the transparency so we'll be able to see this allow us to see exactly where those panels for the wainscot will be located. On the rails panel, I'm going to take the top rail, I'm going to use the replace, and I'm going to browse down and I'm going to find a different style molding from a chair rail, pick the profile that I'm interested in, and the width and the height. Let's go ahead and set this to be three inches in height. And we'll just use a one inch width as well. And then for the bottom rail, Let's do the same thing. Let's go in and use Replace from Library. I'm going to come down into the base moldings. We'll grab a profile. We'll set the width. We'll just use one inch. And then for the height, we'll go ahead and set that at seven and a half inches. I'm going to probably need to adjust the offsets in here at some point. We'll come back in once we have assigned the panel, review it, and make sure all of the moldings align and the offsets are where we want them to. Another item to consider on the schedule, if you don't want this to show up in your wall schedule, you can remove it. And I think one final option is on the rail style, I'm going to uncheck the newel posts. We should have most of the changes in place for this railing. I will come back eventually and on the rail style check to follow stairs when we are placing this over the top of our stairs. With this railing initially configured, I want to change the panel from the glass panel that we see in the right hand side of the screen to using a panel style, as you see in this rendering, that's using a raised panel approach. There are wainscoting panels in the library. Those are base cabinets. You can configure them and make them to the exact specifications you need for your design. Let me go through the steps here. Open up the library, and I'm going to search for wainscot. 
I'm going to pull one of the Wavescot panel out of the architectural core catalog. I'm going to use the center double panel. And let's just kind of zoom in here and place this panel onto this wall over here. And I'm going to make a few changes into this panel. I want to remove the molding on the top and the bottom. I'm going to use the moldings from the wall property from the top and the bottom rails. That way it's very easy to change. So I'm going to remove the moldings off of this particular cabinet panel. And then I'm going to convert this into a symbol. That symbol then can be applied to the railing we just adjusted. Double click to open up this cabinet. On the moldings panel, I'm going to come over and I'm going to delete both of the moldings. That leaves a blank area at the top and at the bottom. And if we come on to the face item, let's go ahead and remove the bottom and top blank area. And then since I set my railing to be at 48 inches, I'm going to adjust the height of this to be also 48 inches. Go ahead and close it. And then I'm going to use the material eyedropper. Let's grab our material eyedropper, pick up a material. I'm in component mode. We'll apply that just to the panel. And this is now the panel that I'm going to convert into a symbol. It needs to be a symbol so that it can be applied onto the railing. Click on the cabinet, come down in the lower edit menu. There is a tool to convert the selected object to a symbol. Go ahead and give it a name. And then it's important that I change the category to millwork. And that way it will allow me to again apply it to that railing. That will add it into the library as you see off to the right hand side. And then as we kind of zoom out in the 3D view, let's maximize the view a little bit. Now I can take this panel and move it over the railing. You see my cursor changed to a replacement cursor. And then once it's applied, it will then replace the glass panel that I had in here. And now I have a wainscot panel. Now let's turn on the vector view and inspect this a little bit before we move this up against the wall and perhaps add it into the library as a wall type. So one of the things I notice is the wainscot panel is on one side and the molding profile is on the other side. I need to reverse that. The easiest way to do that will be to open up the railing wall and reflect the moldings horizontally. I may also inspect the offset and make sure that it's exactly where I want. Let's go back into the wall specification dialog. On the rails panel, I'm going to select the top molding and I'm going to reflect that horizontally. And we can probably zoom in right here and make sure that that is exactly where we want it. And then if we look at the offset, I may want to move that to the front of the panel. You kind of slide down at the bottom here. You can see we need to do the exact same on the bottom. We'll grab the bottom rail, reflect horizontally, flip that around and then make any changes to the offset. Let's change the offset on the top. And I'm going to go ahead and set that offset to maybe be a half inch. You can see that that pulls that forward a little bit. If you want to do a cross section view and be very exact on that, then you can measure it and put in your offsets for your horizontal adjustments. Now that I have the railing configured, I can add this into my library. It's still selected and that will allow me to use this in the future. It's all configured. If I want to change the panel out, you saw how we created the new panel. Then I can just change out the panel using the material painter. While selected, let's add it into the library. Add to library. It comes in. We rotate around. You can see what that panel is. And if you want to change the name, you can highlight this and change the name of it. Let me split my screen again. I'm going to come over. I'm going to click until that snaps to the wall. And then you're going to notice that the room molding in the room is wrapping around this new railing wall. You can either click in the room and remove the moldings. You can also double click on the wall, in this case behind it. On the general panel, there is a no room moldings on the interior and that will remove it. And that's an easy way to adjust your room molding for this wainscot. Now for the wainscoting to come around the stairs, I need to draw another wall using this same wall type. 
and mark it to follow the stairs. So let's come over in the floor plan view. Let's grab the railing out of the library. I'll pick up the snap and I'm going to pull that and snap it onto the two treads. Let's grab this wall, open it up, and on the rail style panel, let's mark the option to follow stairs. Now to get this to align correctly, it's going to be easy to do this either in an elevation view or in a wall elevation. Let's come over, let's cut an elevation through this particular wall, and I'll maximize my view. And I'm going to go ahead and pull this down a little bit further so that we kind of get the right area in here. And I'll turn my crosshairs on. Let's grab the wall that's following the stairs. We'll pull this over. May need to zoom in and see exactly where that's coming in on the nosing. Pull it over just a little bit until it starts to separate. You see the view down in here where my cursor is. I'm just going to pull that back just a little bit so that it's pretty close to being parallel right on top. And then we'll pull this one over and snap it into the wall and then maybe adjust this down just a little bit so that it's right in line with the other one. You can do a little bit cleaner job. I'm trying to be a little bit efficient here in the video. And then the next thing is, let me tile my screens. We'll grab the wall tool out of the library, pick up our snap, draw it in here. And then let's also mark this to follow the stairs since it is on a railing or a landing. And then we may need to adjust the stair landing in a couple different ways. You see that the wall is actually moving up. Let's broaden our view up here. There's a couple things going on here. One, you see the railing appear on the landing. And two, you see the railing not following the landing. Let's take one of these at a time. Let's click on the landing and right on this edge, since there is another wall on top of it, I'm going to click on the highlighted edge that's red. I'm going to remove that railing on there. And when we go back onto the wall, you see that it has merged. I have two walls here that are now merged. They're both following the stairs, and they think that they're a uh, continuous wall. You could mark this in such a way that it wouldn't merge continuous walls. I'm going to show you a slightly different way in the floor plan view. Let's come over here. Let's find that intersection. And to stop that from merging, I'm just going to use the break tool. And that should be enough to do it. If we go back into the camera view, that wall should have adjusted. That is the process to use a railing wall as wainscoting. To learn more, please see our other videos as well as our built in help. Thanks for watching.